Here we are with a Jewish Socialist Bund lesson on wearing a kefiyah. Okay, here we go. Now, open up your kefiyah all the way, like flat. Oh, so like, okay. It's a, it's a big square, right? A cube. Yes. So you open it up. It's huge, right? Yeah. It's a lot yeah. Than a okay. <clears throat> As you may notice, especially in the, the black version here, it looks like a talus, you know, like the black stripe around the edge. And then it's got the, the dangles here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like a Jewish talus, right? Yeah, it is actually. Okay. Now we take one opposite corners. Take this corner and you bring it to meet the opposite corner. Okay. Uh, with the color showing, I'm guessing, yeah. Okay. Like that. So now you've got a triangle. Yeah, okay. All right. Wow. And both both uh, corners, you know, you, you align them so that it's nice and symmetrical. Right. Okay, let's see how you're doing there. I'm starting to understand the value of properly folding the sheets like my wife tried to tell me many times. Okay, so the, the bottom corner, uh, align it. Okay. You're... Okay, bottom corner is aligned. Realign the top. Okay, let's see. All right. Let's see the bottom there. Let's see how well it's... Placed. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. Now, then we lift it up, you know, like you, you have, you know, from the, uh, the long, the long line here. Yeah, this. Okay. Hold it up. Yeah. Okay. Now, and then bunch it up like this. Okay. Yeah. Now it's in a, in a straight line. Okay. Now, what you do, the first uh, the first way, this is, you know, if you want to wear it, you know, to warm up your neck, okay? To keep the heat inside your body, okay? This is what this primary purpose is. So you go like this. Uh, okay. But you have to be sure, you know, that, uh, that the... Uh, that the inside part is is showing here, you know, not like that. Okay, it has to be like there, so that the uh, the black and white, uh, the the dark and the and the and the white, you know, like um, it's actually fishnet, you know, that's what it's symbolic of, you know, the Palestinian fishermen. So this stays on top. This hangs here. Like that, and then this hangs over here. Okay. Let's see. Not too bad, not too bad. A little messy, a little messy, you know, but it's okay, you know, practice. Okay. Now that's the first position. Now, <clears throat> now, now for the uh, Yasser Arafat position. Okay. Oh, cool. Positioning. Okay, now. Okay, start again. Okay. With a wide edge. And you have to wave it around your head like this. Now it's sitting on top of the head. Make sure the, the edges you get them maximum there okay then throw one end over the shoulder yes now yes or if he would pinch pinch the top here so it would come to a point yes yeah yeah that, yeah that was his style yes yes and oh, it's really good this is actually a lot easier to than, than typical bed sheets 
and and this has to be laid out as if it's the flag of Palestine, okay? Okay. So there has to be, you know, uh, so, so pretty well something like that, you know, where you get the flag, you know, coming coming along here. Okay, so more like this. Yeah, yeah. Wait, let's look at uh, raise raise the image up to your neck. Lower yourself. Oh, it's twisted. No, it's twisted. It has to be flat. You know, turn it, turn it flat. No, the other way. Yes, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Now. Okay, stand up. Well, Let's see what it I'm standing up. So back, back, okay, back, back, back up, so we can see the the full effect. Chair, the chair It's still twisted. Okay. You can... That's it. That's it. That's it. That's oh, it. oh, 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 oh! Yeah, it can't be twisted. It needs to be flat. Okay, like a flag. That's it. Okay, so that's how you keep your head warm, you know, instead of a. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's it's a little bit too too, too far back, you know. That the top point has to come forward more. Okay, good enough. Good enough. Looks oh, looks really good. Yeah, yeah. The so best you, black you, I've ever worn. <laughs> So you get protection against the wind, you know, from both sides there, you know, so that's what it's good for. Next. Okay, now we're going to do the uh, the uh, gorilla style, okay? Okay. Gorilla style. Start again, broad edge. Okay. <laughs> Same on top here, yes. I love how this stays in place. More oh yeah, it's sticky. Time. It's sticky. It's cotton. You know, like cotton is uh, is an Arabic word. That's where cotton comes from. It comes from the kafia. Ah, okay. I'm gonna make sure to let people know that actually. Yeah, cotton is not English. It's not French. It's not German. It's Arabic. Okay. Now then. You take uh, one side, the side of your preference, and pull it around. Mm -hmm. And then the other way around. Yes, and then you uh, make a half knot with the uh, the two corners so that it stays in place. That's it, okay. There, now you don't need a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect for black block, yeah. Yeah, you can you can go to demonstrations like this, you know, like and, and you're protected. You know, so this nullifies surveillance and uh facial recognition. Okay, now next positioning. Start again. Bring it up like this. Yes. Over behind the neck. Make sure that the, the top is on top. Okay, then.
go pull it in the back and do a, a half knot in the back. Uh -huh. And there you go. This is, you know, when you just want to, when it's warm and you would just want to walk with a kafia out in the open. And you can just carry it around like this. And it sort of helps. And the and the uh, the tension helps you to stand up straight as well. Um, a Syrian uh, person who was visiting his friends in the, the his Iraqi friends in the falafel shop said that I should actually, if I ever get one of these, I should wear this too with it because he said that that's the most obvious statement you could make if you wanted the people to know where you were actually coming from with this. Because I told yes. them that at a demonstration, yes, that would be good. But you know, like there's talus on these things, as we know. Um, and I remember you had said that these things, they have talus, and they do, <laughs> they do, very yeah. similar, actually, very similar, strikingly similar. But yeah. you can see the knots up at the top; these have actually knots on them, and the talus mm -hmm. comes down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are certain prayers that you take the uh, the, uh, the, the 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 pious on the talus and you wrap it around the finger here and you kiss it when you finish the prayer. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I just I just never really got to know what those prayers were, but I've seen it. I've seen it like the rabbis, you know, and their students do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see what else now. Um. And then yeah. This is the other way. This is the, you know, the cool, the cool way. No, you, know, you have to, you have to make it in, in a, like a snake, you know, bunch it up. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, like this? Yeah. And then, and, and yeah, you don't even have to sort of do a, a semi knot there, you know, in the back. It just sort of sticks together. Yeah, no, it's the fabric. Uh, yeah, it's very good. Except you have to get the, you know, you have to get the design on top. You just have the white on top. Always show the color. Got it. Okay. Just trying to match this to yours. Yeah, get the design, you know, up on top here so that it's uh, easily identifiable. Is that better? Not bad, not bad. Okay, now we're going to decode. This is all coded, huh? So this here, this here is a fisherman's net, right? Right. Right. Um, and this here are olive leaves. These? The, okay, this is the fisher net. Y yes. Okay. That's more symbolic, you know, like this is the more original. See, this is, you know, olive, olive leaves. Right. Hmm? And uh, the black line is, uh, Black line is our our common African origins. You know, black has always been a, a fundamental color, you know, because we come from Africa, basically. And we carry that tradition in our designs. Uh, one uh, important uh, similarity that I can point out is uh, and, and not to be, uh, uh, not to, to, to use the name in vain, you know, but the name of uh, the deity, Adonai, I mentioned because an important point to be made is that this name is found in the Wolof language of Senegal. And in Senegal, 
in Senegal, the Wolof language uses the name Aduna to mean life. So in African origins, life and the name of God are the same. I discovered this, you know, when working with the Senegalese cooks at our cultural center, which is now pretty well ended as a project because artists uh, are incapable of working in a socialist collective. So there was no point anymore of operating it when I'm planning on going back to Palestine. Why would why why would a socialist be uh, sorry why would artists be incapable of working in a socialist collective? Because artists are trained to believe that they're operating as a individual business business. They produce a product, they sell the product in order to make a profit, and that's what they think they are. They think that they're individual entrepreneurs, you know. And of course, they're trying to you know make uh, artwork that is more valuable than it would otherwise be the case. And that's all they're concerned about in terms of uh, finance. Art is another matter, but in terms of uh, operational lifestyle, they think that they're in business and that they go and they try to find an exhibition at a private art gallery where they pay uh, an exhibition fee and then they pay a commission of 50% on sales. And then they think that they're doing well, you know, when they sell, you know, a few paintings. Meanwhile, the art gallery is taking more than they are. And, you know, when they find a nonprofit art gallery, like we had the Gallery Focus here in Montreal, in the Plateau, what do they do? Yeah. They come and have their exhibition, and then they leave. That's it. You never hear from them again. They're not interested in keeping the gallery going. And, uh, you know, like, uh, leaving it all up to me, you know, as if... Uh, I was making something out of it, you know, for myself. Of course, there was no profit to be made. And there was no exhibition fee. And uh, we only asked them to uh, provide a small work of their own art in, uh, in gratitude, you know, to having had an exhibition in a, in a cultural center of Montreal. And uh, some artists, you know, actually did quite well and sold out their exhibitions entirely, like Dominique. And, you know, that would be it. You know, you'd never see them again. So, you know, what's the point? You know, it's, I'm not into uh, operating a business, you know, and I don't want to waste my time trying to make a profit somewhere somehow. <clears throat> so, fine. Gallery is going to be uh, shut down. It'll be an online gallery from now on at the website. That's it. And even that, you know, I don't have the time to do anything much about because... <clears throat> There is a genocidal war being waged on the Palestinian people in Gaza, and I'm dedicating all my time to doing that. So, because uh, I always understood art to be like the expression of the soul, not having nothing to do with like finance, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was one artist, you know, who thought that she was expressing her spirituality, you know, but there's that word again spirituality. Yeah, I, I really got disgusted with it, you know, because it means one, nothing. Two, it's a substitute for anything else that you might want to do as a purpose. And three, it's 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 used, you know, to uh, to bolster your own ego and to make other people who believe in it in spirituality to uh, consider you to be some sort of uh, some sort of uh, a saint. Yes, people who use the word spirituality think that they are saints. And uh, usually uh, they are not. <laughs> That's been my experience too. There's that chauvinistic uh, slogan, spiritual, not religious. And, and usually it's done to put down people who are take their religion very seriously. I've noticed and like usually, you know, are yes. better as people. Yes. It's a, it's a very um, chauvinistic term, spirituality. Yeah. It's also used against people who don't have any uh, religious uh, identity or practice. Yeah. It's like uh, putting other people down as if they <clears throat> are not as human as they are or something like that. You know, when in fact, uh, those that extol uh, spirituality are those that ignore genocide, for example. Yeah. 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 Everything is, uh, I, I've seen, I've seen some of the, the gurus about that, you know, that reality is dependent on your, 
mental state. Uh, usually the contradiction is that is that, okay, what about all the people who would like to do the same time, but they don't get uplifted because they're in like war zones? Yeah. Very artificial. Okay. One more, one more purpose of the kafia. Perhaps it's not a, uh, you know, standard purpose, but it's a purpose that uh, I'm inventing here for you. Okay. You have your kafia. All right. I should probably back up my chair a bit, honestly. Yes. Yeah. Now you hold it like this from the end. Okay. And you make it into a tight, a tightness, you know, by, by twirling it around. Okay. Now you've got a twirl like a snake. Yeah. And you know what you can do with this? It's very long, right? Right. Yeah, it is. So if you have somebody who's uh, who's uh, uh, menacing you, who's coming uh -huh. to attack you with uh -huh. this, like this, all you have to do is oh. get them in the well, I don't have enough range in this boxed in area to do that, but I, I do understand. Okay, that. I'll show you again. Yes. Yeah. And. Yeah. 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 I get it. You get it, huh? Okay. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. I get into really strange confrontations. So, yeah. Thank you. Hmm. But you have to do it quickly, otherwise they'll grab it and pull it out of your hand and then use it against you and steal it. Yeah. Well, well, obviously it was it was practice, but like, yeah, no, I, I get that. Think fast, use it fast. Yeah. Ah, uh, on uh, Sunday I had to uh, think fast, uh, and I had replaced the uh, the slim uh, wooden uh, poles in the banner with a bamboo uh, sticks six feet long because I had expected. That it would be necessary to use them in a fashion, uh, in a defense uh, uh, tactic, and if I were to use, you know, the slim, uh, round, you know, uh, wooden uh, sticks that I had holding up the banner before, it would break, of course. <clears throat> so I replaced them with uh, the six-foot-long bamboo poles, you know, from Dollarama, and. Uh, came in to be uh, very useful, you know, on Sunday, you know, where this uh, guy, without saying anything, just rushed up and tried to grab the other end of the banner that was attached to the uh, lamppost and tried to pull it down. But it was attached by bungee cords, so it only sort of snapped out of his hand. And I wouldn't let him go for the banner again. So I came at him with the other end of the banner, holding the uh, bamboo pole, and gave him a good jab in the thigh. Okay. <laughs> He backed off. He backed off. And then he said, okay, let's let's have a fight here. You know, like that's, you know, he wanted me to put down the, the bamboo pole, you know, to fight him. You know, like, forget it. I kept my bamboo pole. He tried to grab it, you know. I twirled it back into position in an, you know, like in a in in a in a, uh an attack position, you know, so that if he came any closer to me, he would have gotten it, you know, in the head. So he didn't. Then he starts to calm down and he says, are you Jewish? Yeah, second generation. And then he sort of, you know, starts coming closer and talking, you know, to together, together with this other guy, you know, this yeshiva bucher, you know, yeshiva guy, you know, comes from Israel. Oh, boy. And he starts, you know, telling me, do you, you know, like I had a rocket, you know, explode on my, my yeshiva's roof. And if, if I had been on the roof, I could have been killed. And I said, well, yeah, I don't support that, you know, so, you know, like, um, and, and I said, so, so I, you know, like, was wondering, you know, like, what, uh, what kind of rocket, you know, like he's talking about, you know, because the, uh, the rockets that, you know, Hamas has been firing have not had an explosive warheads. They didn't have any explosives, you know, before. They were just flying pipes. And the propellant, you know, was made from sugar and uh, fertilizer. You know, you mix them together and they form, because fertilizers are nitrates, nitrates are activated by sugar, which is a catalyst. You know, you mix them together, you know, like either heat or acid, you know, set them off. And then they become a propellant, you know, with a little hole at the bottom of the rocket. Well, you know, like it just, you know, uh, uh, creates thrust and the thing flies off, right? Uh -huh. Okay. But they don't have explosive warheads because they don't have TNT there, you know. You know, TNT is not going to be allowed in. 
Now, the, the exceptions are that sometimes they get, you know, like really good missiles, you know, from Iran and they smuggle them through the tunnels from uh, uh, under the border with Egypt. And they're, you know, long, long, you know, like uh, two meter long, you know, like missiles, you know, and uh, those are used, you know, to fire at, let's say, Tel Aviv, or, you know, or, you know, great distances. But the ordinary, mis you know, missiles, so-called, you know, which are actually mortars uh, that are made in, in Gaza, you know, don't have any explosive warhead. So I asked him, you know, like, did it explode? And he says, uh, oh, no, no, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, Iron Dome, you know, like uh, stopped it, you know, Iron Dome, you know, as if he was, pro you know, proudly, you know, sort of announcing, you know, that, that oh, yeah, you know, he, that he, that he won the battle, you know, even though, you know, he's complaining about, you know, uh, the pieces, you know, of shrapnel from the Iron Dome explosion, which stopped the uh, uh, mortar from Gaza and exploded over his head. <laughs> and all the, the the debris, the shrapnel from both, you know, the uh, mortar from Gaza and the Iron Dome rocket, which is bigger still, you know, are falling on his head, you know, but he blames Hamas for that even though it was the Iron Dome missile, you know, which created the shrapnel, which fell on the roof of his yeshiva in the first place. So I didn't get to explain all of this, you know, because I don't think he would let me do so because he began to realize, you know, that there's a flaw in his story. So that was this last Sunday, you know, it's all in the video there, you know, because I have this body cam, you know, that was donated by a supporter. It's great, you know, it records everything. And I leave it on all the time, you know, because you never know what's going to happen, you know? But I don't uh, go wearing a, a kafia, you know, because I, I go there, you know, as a, as a Jewish person, you know, I don't push, you know, my identity as a Jewish Palestinian because it's not necessary, not appropriate, and not, not uh, uh, and not, uh, and uh, not uh, uh, not the point. You know, the point is, you know, I go there, and they want to know, you know, like how Jewish am I? You know, like. And so I have to tell them that I've been to Cheder, you know, for seven years. But the yeshiva guy, you know, like he, of course, you know, felt superior to me because, you know, he was going to yeshiva, you know, for 15 years or so. Another guy said the same thing to me when I told him that I had been going to a Cheder for seven years. He said, well, I've been in the yeshiva for a Cheder, you know, for 15 years. And I said, oh, OK. <laughs> but then, you know, like if somebody's educated like that in, Ju in Judaism, uh, you can actually refer to things that he should be taken seriously, like the uh, the the advice of Samuel, and not to um, have a king, and not to be a, a nation like other nations. So then they hear that, and they begin to realize, you know, that that there is an argument to be made, you know, uh, of Judaism against Zionism, and then they begin to calm down, and they have to sort of, you know, have an answer to this. You know, they're trying to think of something, and then you know the conversation takes off from there. So that's. The kind of thing that happens, you know, at the vigil on Sunday. And this last Sunday, you know, a lot of the Zionists thought that I was going to be banned by the police, you know, because the Independent Jewish Voices group was banned by an injunction because they came there to harass and uh, and obstruct uh, Jewish people going into the Jewish community campus. So they were banned, but the Jewish Socialist Bund is not. And the police accepted that. I told them that I was been there, you know, like every Sunday for the last five months. <laughs> And uh, they saw that, you know, the, the name on the uh, injunction was not the same as the Alliance of Concerned Jewish Canadians. And so that was that. Everything was okay. Then the Zionists, you know, got upset and they had to come and try to convince me that I shouldn't be there. <laughs> but they didn't. So that's it. That's all. So it's, it's kind of... Um... It's kind of traumatic at times to see the reaction you get from the Zionists because they 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 make these unconvincing statements at you, you know, and you know, like I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. It looks extremely coordinated to me because it comes in one way after another, like precise. It's too precise for me not to think this is coordinated. Perhaps I don't know. there are there are that many Zionists. And they've all been trained, you know, to defend uh, the Zionist state, you know, like whenever and wherever, you know, they're all sort of, you know, they're all, uh, what are, what are the, what's the Hebrew name that they use uh, for it? I forget, you know, but they're all, you know, in effect, they're declared to be <clears throat> diplomatic agents on behalf of the integrity of the, of the Zionist state. <laughs> and they all believe this, you know, they all think that they have to save, you know, the state. 
And then I explained to them, you know, what you taught me, you know, in Hebrew, Hamadinat Yelo Yisrael. So yeah. they, they shout. Hamadinat Velo Yisrael, yes. Hamadinat Velo Yisrael. Okay, so they, you know, a lot of them, you know, like drive by and they shout it, you know, me uh, as they drive by saying, uh, Am Yisrael Chai. So I can say that too, because Hamadinat Velo Yisrael, you know, Yisrael is the name of the Jewish people. And it's even the name of my Ashkenazi tribe. You know, my tribe is Israel, my father explained to me. So uh, next time they uh, shout, you know, um, uh, Am Yisrael Chai, I'm going to, I'm going to shout back, Am Yisrael Chai, Hamadinat Velo Yisrael. And then if they understand Hebrew, then they'll get it. And if they don't, they're going to say, oh, huh, how come he's saying Am Yisrael Chai? He's not supposed to say that. <laughs> so then they'll begin to think. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Okay. Solidarity, Abraham. Solidarity there in Comrade Net. And we continue. And it uh, seems like we have a great responsibility, uh, basically, to save the Jewish people. We need to get as many people on this as we can. I, I, I hope we can get in perfect contact with the Jewish Bund in Germany. Like, they're, they're, they're radical. I, I like them. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's Professor Fanny there, you know, who's in contact with me all the time since 20 years. So yeah, they're 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 doing it on their own. You know, they're figuring out, you know, that they have to be Jewish Bundes because that's the the only way you can really be Jewish. Otherwise, you know, you have to renounce your Jewishness. Like that, you know, uh, film director who got up in front of his audience making a declaration in solidarity with the Palestinians, but then he starts off saying that he refuses his Jewishness. Well, you know, like this is like Professor Shlomo Sand in France, you know, who says that he's no longer Jewish, that to be Jewish is to be a Zionist. He's supporting Zionism, you know, by saying so. And what, is, what does it do? You know, like he's, he's renouncing his Jewishness. So why should anybody who's Jewish, you know, listen to this guy, you know, who he's made a Holocaust us. film? Okay, you know, but he's renouncing his Jewishness after making a Holocaust film, which is doubly condemnable, you know, like... Really, there, there's a fear of condemning the Western churches, uh, uh, and, and particularly like the Western churches who stick with this, like the Protestants and the Mormons. Like, there's a fear of condemning that for what it is and how that is intrinsic to Zionism itself. You know, no, I'm not talking about the churches. I'm talking well, about what, I, what, what I'm saying is it's easier for someone to denounce their Jewishness than it is to condemn the the, the Western churches. You know, well, he's, he wasn't interested in. It wasn't an issue for him. <clears throat> the issue was, you know, uh, uh, Zionism, whether it's a yes or no. So he thought that in order to condemn Zionism, he had to renounce his Jewishness. That yeah, was the like, problem there. Yeah, like you said, that it, that 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 boosts the whole Zionist argument because then yeah, people get in their mind, yeah. oh, Zionism is Jewish when yeah. it's really not. Yeah, yeah. So you know, like he he just you know like actually. <clears throat> ended up, you know, doing something that supported Zionism rather than the opposite, you know, because he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, he, he should stay a director, you know, leave politics for others. Leave the politics for us. <laughs> okay, good. Good to see you. And we continue. Yes. <clears throat> 